And you're still with the University of Houston. Mm -hmm. um, so I assume you did the fellowship. Mm -hmm. And you taught for? Uh, the, it was a three year program. Three year so program? Taught there for three years. And how long has that been since now? Because now I know you're still teaching at the university, mm -hmm. so is what year teaching are you at now? Uh, so this will be my fourth year of teaching at university level. Very cool. Um, painting and... Drawing. Painting and drawing. Yep. All right. Um, do you enjoy teaching? I love teaching. Uh, I was actually a little fearful about um, originally accepting the fellowship. I knew I'd be good at it. Um, because I've always been good with working with other people. I've always been um, good at teaching things, but I didn't know if I would actually like it. <laughs> <laughs> right? There's a lot of nuances So to um, I was actually very surprised that um, I did, and not only was I good at it, I actually really liked teaching it. So um, I was very excited to continue teaching at, at the university. Very cool. Um, so let's talk a little bit about process. We are surrounded by some of your works here um, in your lovely home. Thank you for having us. Um, right now you're focused in acrylics, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that you, you've dabbled in other mediums before, um, but let's talk about acrylic first. That's what you're working with right now. What, what draws you to use acrylic as your medium? Uh, well, uh, acrylic, uh, as you can see from this one right here, um, occasionally I'll, I'll silk screen images on, on, on it as well um, and acrylic dries fast and because I'm a super impatient person um, and I do a lot of layering mm -hmm. um, sometimes uh, that's it's like an immediate thing that I need to do I need to I need to layer and I want to do it fast and acrylic dries really fast so the need for, for that instant gratification. Well, not quite instant, it still takes time to dry, mm -hmm. but... But yeah, the flexibi flexibility to do something and then move on. So you mentioned silk screening, mm -hmm. and I know you have a history with printmaking as well. And I can see you've got some text here in your background. Is that something you silk screen or do you directly paint that? Oh, yeah, um, no, actually, so the only element here that's actually silk screen is the screen. The texture? Yeah, that texture. Um, all of the, the words are all hand painted. So, though they look like they're silk screened, <laughs> they're, they're very uh, crisp. I nice. actually think it's faster for me to hand paint them than to go through the process of silk screen. And generally, because I'm only choosing one word per painting, mm -hmm. and it's just for that one painting. Okay. What's yeah. so? What's the relevance of the text you select? Like this one says permanent. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, the idea, so this one is bouquet for the noisemakers, um, and that was specifically thinking about the people around us that are really loud and they make an impact in our life, or make life, and they make an impact in other people's lives. So I was circling around this idea of like what's <coughs> loud, um, and at that point I was incorporating, uh, actually putting flowers in and out of my bouquets. I'm calling all of them bouquets, even though some of them don't even have flowers. Right. Um, some of them more become like the essence of the idea rather than an actual bouquet. So this is the first one I remember. Um, I had painted five or six. This is the first one that um, actually had flowers in it after painting three or four that had no flowers in it at all. Um, they started to kind of come back out. Um, and um, of course, uh, things that make noise um, kind of came into my life um, in very strange ways and it kind of felt like it needed to be. Um, sometimes the, the words I come up with are immediate and they need to be there. Um, oftentimes there's a running list of words that I'm circling around. Um, and the associations are generally run by a lot of people at different times um, where I'll ask them the associations. Um, also, I'll kind of like look up the reference too. Um, I actually don't remember the moment that I thought of permanent, but um, at the time it became something that uh, felt permanent at the, at the time. This idea that there's always going to be somebody that's a noisemaker in your life, no matter how hard you try to eliminate noisemakers, they're always going to be there. So I felt like at that moment, like permanent was that word 
But um, text is also like one of those things where you immediately read it. It's, it's like one of the first things you do. So how readable the text is becomes really important to me. So sometimes the text that you see, if it's not numbers, is not so um, obvious. So like in that one, it says fragile, but it's not until you really search for it that you're able to find it. And so that's why there's lots of layers of it over. I, wa I want you to see it and I want it to be a part of it, but not an important part. In a subtle way. Yeah, exactly. So other processes. Before you got way into acrylics, you did a series of um, watercolors that primarily feature objects mm -hmm. um, placed in unique narrative ways. Mm -hmm. um, where did the, the inspiration for those come from? Um, those, uh, sometimes those... The quirky titles. Yeah, they're very quirky. Um, and sometimes they came from uh, moments in time stories friends had tell, told me, things I read, funny situations that I kept having with other people um, that were these connections that um, were almost like intimate moments that we all had, um, that we all shared. And so I tried to translate that into like a little mini narrative with a still life. Um, and so often they're about those like funny things, those quirky times that you don't necessarily talk about with everybody, mm -hmm. but you'll chat about with like a personal friend or acquaintance. Um, a very like private moment that I try to capture in like a little watercolor. Okay, so you would say that's a that's an intimate series, um, whereas your acrylics seem to work seem to have more of a public message, like a broad stroke. Yeah, definitely. Um, the watercolors are um, though they're more intimate. Uh, they're more like based off more personal moments where I try to make a connection. But yeah, these are more uh, idea based mm -hmm. and I would say the watercolors are more experience based. The watercolors like mirror actual life, like real life events, um, whereas these are, you know, a more, um, like you said, like an idea or a concept that you're trying to convey. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say that the watercolors mimic real life events because you don't generally have like matches sticking in lemons and objects and objects inanimate objects communicating with each other. So right. <laughs> so kind of, yes. <laughs> um so we talked a little bit about your acrylics and your watercolors, um, but also featured on your website are your sculptures self-actualization and I'd like to hear about how, how you came up with that idea or how you decided to pursue that or where it came from. Uh, so that series or that sculpture um, in particular is a, a part of a bigger ser series that I was calling Feelings and Other Parts. I was making those sculptures alongside these feelings paintings that I was making where the, the text of feelings is scrolled along most of the paintings. And at the same time I was researching um, basic human needs, so um, which kind of trails back to the historical Maslow's hierarchy of needs um, and, and that triangle of needs um, and reflecting on them as I was doing my feelings paintings and as I was making these sculptures. Um, and so each kind of sculpture was um, associated to, or was connected to each one of those. Uh, different levels of the pyramid. Yeah, the different levels of the pyramid. Um, and I couldn't come up with one for the top, which is self-actualization. And um, after thinking about it for a really long time, the only way I could convey the top part of that pyramid was a mirror. Right, because you can't actualize unless you reflect. Right. So um, there was no other way for me to communicate. So that that is like one of my sculptures where it was very found objects put together. This is this is all I needed for that. So so let's talk about. Um current exhibitions, current shows, things that are going on now. Um, we talked, or I saw that you um, currently have a piece that is being held by the Lending Library, mm -hmm. the 
Art Lending Library. It's in Houston and Galveston. Can we talk a little bit about that? What's, what's up with that? Uh, Nick Barbie uh, created the Lending Library. It's out of Galveston and my watercolor is part of it. Uh, you can join for the Lending Library and borrow work um, and he's starting to build up a collection where you can take out art just like you can take out books. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the Houston art scene. So I know I know you're not a native, um, but you've been here a number of years. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine you're fairly invested in the scene. Would you say it's a welcoming place to come into as a visual artist? Yes, um, I, th I think so. Um, Houston's very different from the other cities I've lived in. Um, it's really big. Um, and so uh, the art scene is, is pretty big as well. And uh, when you say big, you mean it's like a very diverse scene or like um, in types of art, not so much ethnicity, but. Yeah, um, it is. It's very, it's very unique. There's a, there's a lot of opportunities here, I think in Texas in general, that um, most of the country doesn't know about. Right. Which is really... People associate Houston with art? Yeah, I mean, um, so I mean, I grew up in the Midwest and I came from Portland, Oregon and there's a stigma upon Texas and I don't think, I mean, I, I lived in other states most of my life and so uh, I was surprised to learn how wonderful Houston's art scene was um, before I even moved here. And um, so it, it still feels like there's something really hidden and secret about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me as an outsider, because there's a lot of wonderful collections, like the Manil collection. It's just, there's such wonderful art treasures in this city that are here and are accessible that aren't available in all art, like all cities across the country. That um, it's not just the artists that are working and living here, but the, the art that's like available right. all the time here is, is amazing. Very cool. Um, so my last question is, so why do you make art? Why do you choose to do this with your life? Like, it's not an easy task. It takes years of dedication. And, um, Apparently I, I don't like to do the easy thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I, I need to make it. An avenue, an avenue that speaks to people. I mean, like there's no language barrier with visual art. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, would you say your work is like a, a cathartic release of emotion, or? Uh, oh goodness, I wish it was that. <laughs> <laughs> I try and tell myself that. Uh, totally yeah. Cool. I, I would like to, I mean, I think I try to tell other students that, that you know, that it is that, and it can be, but, um, and, and I think maybe at times for me it has been. I mean, I'm, uh, I probably read um, and listen too much of the current, like, political environment that makes me go crazy right now. Um, so I think it's hard to say that my work is completely separate from that. Um, or separate from my personal life, but now I forget the original question. <laughs> Do you feel like creating, uh, creating art is like an emotional experience for you as well? Like you're emotionally invested in the work you create? Um, well, I, I don't think, I, I think over time as an artist you become less emotionally invested. Um, there are times where there's a lot of meaning and emotion that I think goes into each piece. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't necessarily say there's an investment because there's always a parting time. So as much as I put into it, I'm, I'm, it's going to exit from my life. So I'm passing it on to another person who's going to hang that up in their house or in their, in their world. And so um, there's only so much investment you can put into something that you let go of constantly. <laughs> right, right, right. That makes sense. Okay, I think we hit everything again.